Now, we are ready to start. The title of this presentation is DACA, to degree mentoring undergraduate students to become higher education professionals. This will be by Leno Hum and Dulce Maldonado Munoz from Southeast Missouri State University. Please listen with a round of applause. Buenos dias. My name is Linnell Holland. I'm the Director of Admissions at Southeast Missouri State University. I'm Dulce Maldonado Munoz, Current Admission Counselor at Southeast Missouri State University. So we're here today to discuss an internship model of an undergraduate student that was Dulce. Um, for us to build outreach recruitment efforts for first generation Hispanic Latino fam um, students and their families. And there were several departments at the university that collaborated to build this program and that included admissions, university marketing, and academic support centers. And we are going to share examples of uh, that work in those efforts. But before we do that, I do want to share with you information about who we are at Southeast Missouri State University. So we're located in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is two hours south of St. Louis, Missouri. You can see a picture of our campus here to the right. Uh, we actually have a main campus in Cape, and then we have a river campus dedicated to the arts. We serve uh, 11,500 total students. About 1,000 of those are undergrad or graduate, and then the rest are undergraduate students. We enroll about 1,800 beginning freshmen every fall, 1,000 transfer students. We have nearly 1,000 African American students. We have over 200 Hispanic students. We continue to see more students indicate multiple races, and so we're at about 100 students reporting that. And then we have nearly 750 international students. Our average ACT is a 23 of our beginning freshmen and a 3.5 GPA. At Southeast, we have over 145 undergraduate majors, over 100 certificates, 75 graduate programs, and of those programs, we offer 30 programs that are completely completed online, and that's a combination of undergraduate and graduate. And then we have multiple regional campuses within the Boot Hill of Missouri, and there's about 12 bachelor's degree programs that students complete on those regional campuses. Our programs are high quality. Um, we have over 30 national and international accreditations. We're one of the top two institutions in Missouri for the number of accreditations that we have. Um, our education is developed for personal support for our students from the first day they start until they graduate with faculty and staff who care. Um, they're there supporting them along the way with these amazing academic programs that are fostered in career preparation to help them launch an extraordinary career when they leave Southeast. We have about 3,000 students who live on campus. We have 22 residence halls and 10 dining venues. We are Division I Athletics in the Ohio Valley Conference. And you can see we have 180 student organizations. We have 23 fraternities and sororities. And we have over 30 study abroad opportunities for our students. So a little more about our student population. Um, we do service a 26 county region within Southeast Missouri, and that spans from St. Louis all the way down to the Boot Hill. And you'll see our population is 58% female, 42% male. 13% uh, of our population is multicultural, and that increases to 18% when you include international students. Being that we are a comprehensive regional public university in Missouri, we do primarily serve those students within that 26 county region. And so 80% of the students we serve are, are Missouri residents. 52%, 55, 52, 52% is our six year graduation rate and 75% is our retention rate, sophomore, to, uh, freshman to sophomore. So our goal at the university is 80%. So we are working um, towards increasing that retention rate, and our goal is 60% for our graduation rate. 
And then we have a strategic enrollment management objective at the university to serve as a leader in the state of Missouri in enrollment of a student body that reflects the diverse global world in which students live and work. So that really leads us to our catalyst. And this slide may be a little difficult for you to read, but in fall of 2014, enrollment of Latino students at Southeast was 1.6% of headcount. And that was compared to 3.4% at Missouri Public four-year universities. And if you look at census data for Missouri and you look at ethnicity by county, you'll see some of the challenges we have as an institution in that we serve that 26 county region. And when you look at the number of Hispanic students in that region, the Kent Wanda County has 5.4% Hispanic population and that's Dunklin County. It's right in the bottom of the boot hill, and that's where Dulce and I are both from. And then the other counties that have the uh, population to draw from is St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and St. Charles County. And they have about 25 to 2.8% Hispanic students in those counties. So if you look at the state of Missouri, there's other areas within the state that has much larger percentages. So in southwest Missouri, um, there's counties that have seven to eight percent. So that is some of our challenge um, with the population that we're serving. Um, there's not a large percentage of Hispanic students, but there's definitely students there that maybe are not pursuing higher education. And so our goal is to reach them, to tell them that this opportunity is here, that there's resources available, and we want you to see the career opportunities that you would have with a degree from Southeast. And then the other catalyst was on July 1st, 2015, Dr. Carlos Vargas, your chairman of HETS, became president of Southeast. He was our 18th president, and he's our first Hispanic president at the university. So that definitely generated some wonderful opportunities for us. Get some claps up here, yes. <laughs> is so engaged with our student body. Um, when you talk about an institution that's student-centered and what does that mean, that means someone who is having conversations with our students to find out what their needs are, maybe things that we need to improve upon or things that we're doing well, and then acting upon that information that's being gathered, and that is happening at Southeast. And so that is definitely um, something that's impacting these efforts as well. So for us, it was a slow start, and it did start before Dulce joined our team. So in 2015, as the president started, our division signed up for a webinar on working with Hispanic students. We created a single web page that you could link to from our admissions page, Necesita Ayuda. So a page, do you need help in Spanish? But it had two or three paragraphs, and it basically had contact information for people on campus who spoke Spanish. So they could have a phone number or an email address, but it was very limited. In 2016, um, there were some Hispanic college fair opportunities in St. Louis that we attended. We also worked with the president's office to get a letter from Dr. Vargas in Spanish to give those students at that fair. And then things really began to launch and take off when there was a campus event, a university event with a panel, and my supervisor, Dr. Debbie Bilo, who was um, at the HETS event over the summer in New York, she is the vice president for enrollment management and student success, and she was serving on the panel. And while she was up there, she got a question from Dulce. What was that question? And that question I had asked her was, how can we get more Hispanic Latino students involved with campus? Yes. So the next day, or you know, I got a call from Dr. Bilo, and she said, come down to my office. I have to tell you about something. So I came down there, and she you know, talked to me about the panel and the question that she received from Dulce, and she said, I want this student to work in the Office of Admissions. I want us to create an internship opportunity for her, so let's set up an interview, have her come in. Um, and so we did. She brought her resume, 
and we asked her questions we wanted to learn about her experiences as a student and her background as an individual and right away we offered her the opportunity to internship in the office of admissions and we said can you start in two weeks going to chicago illinois to some hispanic college fairs and it just happened to coincide with our spring break at the university and she said let me talk to my family and let me think about this. I'm doing an internship at another place um, close you know, to campus. And um, she did, but she got back to us quickly. And we were so thankful that she accepted that opportunity. And so we gave her a crash course. She went to Chicago, represented us at a college fair. The very first fair, did you collect like 200? Yes, the stack was about this. <laughs> But I went back as soon as I got back, and they were like, well, if you want to follow up with all the students, you can send them a personalized note. So I took that, and it was quite a few. My handwriting really, really did improve. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote lots of postcards and, and followed up with all those students um, and did a fabulous job. So her internship was a combination of spending time in the admissions office as well as university marketing. And she's going to go in depth on these items, but she worked on creating a comprehensive website with multiple pages of information in Spanish for students. She assisted with taking print publications and translating them into Spanish. She built a network of contacts from scratch and then went out and made visits to churches and schools. So I'm going to turn it over to Dulce to talk about her work. Thank you, Anna. Yes, as you can imagine, I was a student last uh, uh, 2017, a DACA student, I was a transfer student at Southeast, and really what really took me off is with any student that we see in our campus, involvement is key to the success to get in that degree. So with me, my involvement was a student organization of Latinos, and with that, there was a lot of opportunities that I had that I will talk to you about more later that came with that, with the mentoring that I had with the organization. But with that, one of the cultural events that I attended, as, my, as Linnell mentioned, talking with Dr. Billow, with that question really took off, like, how do we get more Hispanic Latino students involved on campus? That was my biggest question because I served as a current president in the Student Organization of Latinos, and my biggest thing is like, where are the Latinos? We need to get them involved and be participating in the campus events that we have throughout the academic year. So with that, we had an open discussion when I went through that interview quickly with them, with Linnell and Dr. Billow, was like, why, how can we do that outreach with those students? And the main key thing was those communications, as you can imagine, language being the most important of one of all, especially with ta talking with families, because most students like myself were first generation and most of us didn't know what college was or the process to even matriculate into university. So that was very key in me relating my experiences as a DACA student and how I transferred into university when I was engaging with these students. But the main core thing that after I came back from that, um, from that his, uh, Hispanic National College here in Chicago was that I launched a, the website, sorry, I'm having to sample difficulties with the clip here. With that, the main focus once I got back from the college fair was that I went back and did some research. Obviously, I had no training up to them when they sent me over. I'm like, yeah, your first week on the job is go out there and talk to some students and share some of your experiences and help them throughout the application process into the, into the university. So with that, when I came back, I did research, especially as us DACA students, I know the financial resources are a little bit more limited. So definitely did some research of what I wanted to include in the Spanish website, which I started working with the University of Marketing from May until August. So it took three months to launch this comprehensive website, and it is simo.edu forward slash espanol. And with that, what I had in mind with this website was mainly when I was a high school student, thinking back when my mom, she wanted, she was very invested in me getting an education, but the, things, the thing was that language was a barrier for her. She didn't really understand what college was. She never went. I was a first generation student. So for me, it was very difficult as a high school student trying to figure out college, and then on top of that, trying to see how I would matriculate into it. So my thing, my, what I thought in my mind was, how, what information will be relevant to the students and how it could also 
also help out with their family if they wanted to help and also understand what college was about. So with that in mind, obviously, there was various tags that I worked on. Most of them I did use from the original content of the original website that we have in English, and that was admissions criteria, uh, what it meant to be admitted into the university, how that process worked, explaining the national accredited uh, admission tests that we have to take, such as the ACT or the SAT, explaining those in depth. In addition to that, the financial aid that we offer at Southeast, especially with scholarships being key, the differentiations between what scholarships are available to DACA students, undocumented, and for those permanent residents, making those distinctions within the website of what they could qualify for. And obviously through my research that I had from March to May, I found even as myself as a student, most of the scholarships and financial aid that were for DACA were from external or public other organizations that were given scholarships to students who like would require an extra essay or if they came for predominantly Hispanic backgrounds. With those, I found there was a lot of quite a few uh, global corporations such as Coca-Cola, Taco Bell, those were really key that I wanted to mention to students and stress in the website and the financial aid portion that most of those scholarships don't have to think that it's necessarily coming from the university, but it could come within your community and at the national perspective too. So with that, I included a lot of tabs. The main one that I really worked on was the soil page, which was the student organization of Latinos involvement, which I'll talk more about again about that organization. So with that, it took about three months and at the University of Marketing, I found more internship with the director there, uh, uh, Mr. Jeff Harmon. He was very invested in helping me more with the technical side of it. I only provided the content and the translations of some of those websites, but also kind of in the context of what Hispanic Latino students need and understand, such as DACA students as myself. So in addition to that, in the three months that I was also in the university's uh, marketing team, I also worked on some publications that's in the next slide. We I worked on a travel piece for the River Campus, uh, which at Southeast, we're the only campus in Missouri that's dedicated to the arts, and we are credited with music, theater, and dance. So the, the director of the River Campus was really interested in going to this college where, where there's a lot of Hispanic Latino students, and she wanted to engage with them, so she contacted marketing about seeing about a translation of a publication. So I worked with those publications, any within the flyers or the travel pieces, as you can see at the top. It says, Imagina un campus dedicado a las artes, nosotros lo hicimos. So things that I worked on were the tra translations with those flyers and those pieces that we could use to help engage with students when we're talking with them. The next portion of that was the promotional videos that I worked on. I didn't work, again, I didn't work in the produ production side of it. I am a mass communications major at the time, so I was working more about the strategic way of what information we were delivering to our students. As far as that, I helped with the videos with the text overlay that what we had. There was quite a few that we worked on. The main ones that we kind of wanted to push more forward were the ones, the pieces with Dr. Vargas, our president, talking to students about what they could find at Southeast, a community where they could launch their career and be successful once they got their degree. And then also pieces, again, with the parents, because with the Hispanic uh, population, a lot of it falls on the family. I know myself, I can mention it, my family was very influential in me getting my education. So with that, we stress the, the emphasis on those videos we had for the, to the parents. The other videos were uh, promotional pieces. They were like 30 second, 30 second videos about the programs, the different programs that we offer, and reinstating again the fact that a lot of what they will do at Southeast, they will not be doing it alone, and that yes, they can do it. They can get a degree and be successful. The next slide, as, as I was working, I was working in the summer, again from May until August, uh, with my internship, uh, not only working with the university marketing, I was also spending half of my time at admissions. So in admissions, I was getting my training about knowing about what options we have for admission, the criteria that we have, getting those tiny, fine details that most of us, most of the high school students, thinking back to myself, didn't take the invest the time to really read them and understand what they meant. So all that training that I had, and then the programs, different programs that we offer. And while I was going through the training, I was like, we do have a lot to offer. So I was like, I wanted to see how much I could translate that over when I was engaging with students. But not only that, throughout the summer, I was also working to implement uh, a network that I could do workshops to students to reach out to them, as I had mentioned earlier in the open discussion that I had with Dr. Billow. And the main thing was that I realized, looking even at my own family, 
we are Catholic and most Hispanic Latino students and populations are predominantly a high percentage Catholic. So I, I thought what great idea would it be to collaborate with the communities in the churches, the Catholic churches within the Southeast region and the St. Louis region where there is those large pockets of Hispanic and Latino uh, uh, populations. So with that, what I did was started a framework of which churches I wanted to focus on, especially I started very basic. As an intern, I went out to Google and I, look, I looked up, I think is what I was talking the search war was, uh, Spanish masses within near me. So with that, I started looking at those churches and I started doing a framework as you would with the regular admissions component of it when you contact those high schools. For me, those high school counselors, instead of being the high school counselors, mine were Catholic priests that I was contacting, calling, collaborating with them, setting up appointments to where I could go out there and do those workshops. And those workshops typically were right after mass because the Catholic priest told me they will come for mass. That's for sure, because that's the biggest thing, but I don't know if they will come during the week. So most of the workshops that I did were on the Sunday after the masses had, were passed through, and most of the workshops that I did were about college knowledge, how those admission criteria work to matriculate into university, what they needed to, to think about, especially with their ACT and their GPA, and then meeting the deadlines if they qualify for FAFSA, they can, DACA, that was the other thing that I had uh, learned through my research. They can apply because it helps to establish the financial need that they will need to fund their education. So those were things that I wanted to stress on that they, yes, they can file for FAFSA and when the deadlines are, especially those deadlines with the application process, we have a priority like most universities to get that process through. So those were the college knowledge. And most of these workshops that I did were with families. So the parents were very, very engaged more than so than the students, and they had great questions. I uh, gave out my contact information. I had a couple of families come back and follow up with me. They actually came and visited campus. Kind of gave, I went on the tour with them, gave them kind of sort of like a bilingual uh, tour of campus. It's like, this is what we have to offer. And they were really, really happy to know that there would be someone there helping their student along, kind of mentor them. And that kind of became like a role model for each one of the students I interacted with. Another workshop that I really focused on was the financial aid options for DACA undocumented students, especially with Missouri, the bill that we have. Uh, anyone that's, even if you're a DACA undocumented, you're still going to have to pay out of state tuition. So that was a big key trying to find those financial aid options. Like I said, I spent a good portion of my internship trying to find organizations that would offer those finan financial aid that would qualify for those students. And come to find out, near the St. Louis area, there's a Hispanic Scholarship Alliance that if they live within that region, they can receive those, those scholarships they could qualify for. And I went to their ceremony, they went, I had the opportunity to go in the summer, and they award more than 500 scholarships every year. So I, as I was talking with the students and these families when I was doing these workshops at the churches, I was like, hey, you know, just because you live within this community, this neighborhood, there's scholarships for you out there, and they didn't even realize that. So that was the biggest thing I was focusing, so focusing on, and telling them that like, hey, if you really want to fund your education, you should make a job of yourself finding those scholarships, and your payment or reward will be receiving those scholarships. In addition to the workshops that I did throughout and I implemented throughout from the fall semester, this fall, fall semester, from August all the way up to December when I graduated from the college, I worked with those churches to do those workshops after their masses. In addition to that, I got the opportunity again to go again to Chicago and do the Hispanic College Fairs. Again, those were really rewarding experiences for me because the students saw themselves reflected and I was able to share not only now what I had gained to the training and the mentorship that I got from the Office of Admissions as far as the criteria that we need as far as matriculating to the university, I could share my personal own growth and saying, hey, yes, you can be successful, you can get a degree, and then you might be in my shoes next year if you apply yourself, get the financial aid that you need, and then go through college. It's very, very, very doable. So with that, I was very, I found out that it was a very rewarding feeling for me, being able to help those students and inspire them that yes, we can do it. We can achieve our education, and then we can apply it and be professionals out there in our, in our communities. So with those, the Hispanic National Affairs, as Lino mentioned, I got quite a few interacted at some point, and I don't know if you've ever been to college first, but you're like restocking the supplies and out there. It's like, give me a second, and I was engaging with students, and for me, that was the best part about my internship, is being that source of helpful helpfulness to those students, and really engaging with them. They were really asking questions, especially the DACA students, with the financial aid that we had to offer. 
here at Southeast that that's one of the decision factors that I decided on was when I mentioned that once you're admitted into the university, we have a foundation over a thousand scholarships that are about $1.8 million. So we're very grateful to our donors or alumni or community members that donate into this foundation. And I told them they require, they might require you to write an essay or they might require you to be involved in certain groups or organizations. So again, I was tying that back in that you have to be involved once you get to college to receive that financial aid. And they looked at me, well, well, what kind of organizations do you have? And we have over 180 student organizations at the, our, our campus. So with that, the next slide will show, we'll talk more about the student organization of Latinos. To me, that was the biggest, so to speak, my own personal catalyst. Because there I found peer mentoring within my own peers that were Hispanic and Latino students, kind of brought them together to help each other out. But not only that, the faculty member that advises our group, she was very dedicated to us students and pushing opportunities. She was the person that I really looked up to and admire and I still do to, to this point. She was very instrumental in getting those opportunities with the events to talk with Dr. Billo and then with Lunel about the opportunities we had to offer to our students. Not only that, but we do, besides mentoring and supporting each other, we do have a part of our mission within the organization is to promote the cultural uh, aspect within our community. So with that, we make an emphasis of celebrating the Hispanic Heritage Month. That's every year. It starts from September all the way to October. So that was very key for us to celebrate that. And just recently, last semester, we had a great, 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 great event. It was called Tacos at Twilight. It was, yeah, it was Tacos at Twilight. We're celebrating the uh, Latin American Independence Days. There was many throughout September and October, Mexico being September 15th. So with that, we were really engaged in trying to bring community members within the Cape Girardeau City. We have about seven or eight local Mexican restaurants, and then the students, with the, the Hispanic students that we had, to coordinate and fund and bring this event to a really livelihood. And we had the presence of Dr. Vargas come visit us and talk a little bit, and we got to share our culture with other community members as well. Not only Hispanic students, we had students from everywhere that wanted to share with the culture. So that was very, very, Grateful to see how that event turned out. In addition to that, every year we work with the Department of Equity and Issues to bring speakers to talk to us students so that we can see our role models of what they're doing out there in the profession. The most recent ones that we had was Magali Del Barco. She's a Peruvian NPR correspondent, and she was sharing her experiences of her being a Latina and working in the media task force. And me being a uh, mass communications major, I was really invested in how successful she came to be and now the position that she has out there and sharing her culture, not in the workforce, but in the work that she does. In addition, we had Fidencio Duran. He was an award-winning artist from Austin, Texas. Again, he was a local born, really close to the, to the border of Texas. So he shared his experiences growing up there through his painting. And he said that he was grateful that yes, he applied himself, he did go to school. It's like, like most of you, you're in school, so he was making the efforts to stay in school. It helps, and you got to see his beautiful art that he showcases live throughout in Texas. So with that organization, I really credit to the students when I was engaging with them. Once you get to college, I was telling them, you need to be involved in something. It doesn't have to be the student organization Latinos, although it would really help because it keeps you in touch with what we have to offer as far as mentoring and then those speakers that we bring in onto our campus. So I was really engaged with those, with those students as far as that. So when I ended my internship in December, I saw the opportunity within our admissions office that there is a position available to apply to become a admission counselor. So I applied for it and again I went through the interview process and I went with my resume and I was like, well I have all this experience. I launched this network with these community leaders in the churches, uh, did this Hispanic college course with students and most importantly that website. That's, a, that's probably my biggest, my, my most proud legacy I left behind in the institution was having that resource to, for anyone to use, whether it just be students, or even their families, or even thinking about the international office. I had quite a few international students, and some of them came from Spain, Ecuador, Costa Rica, and with those, also showing that yes, we provide a Spanish component, especially with the scholarships that we just recently added, and I helped translate, we have international scholarships added onto that. So that was really rewarding for me to have be able to part and leave that behind. So after I highlighted all those elements within my interview process, I got a call back just before my graduation, two days before, and they were like, yes, 
Uh, we want you to offer you the position. Would you be interested in continuing your work that you've been doing all the way up to this point? And I was like, I would be more than happy to. So I walked the stage knowing that I had a job and a job that would be most rewarding to me and that I would be able to give back again to my fellow fellow uh, Hispanic Latino community, but not only that, the DACA and undocumented students, that there is a need for that. So I was more than happy to accept the position and with that, I've been continuing to be their mentor and role model and helping them get to college and get that degree. So we are grateful to have Dulce working full time in the Office of Admissions. And in addition to her outreach with the Hispanic community, she's actually serving students um, now in the entire Southeast Missouri region, um, just the county south of Cape Girardeau um, County that the university's in, and hitting those communities where our regional campuses are, and of course serving Dunklin County that has the largest percentage of Hispanic students within our primary service region. So very thankful for that. And she is amazing uh, and, and is doing an outstanding job. You know, we are very blessed to have Dr. Vargas and Mrs. Vargas on our campus uh, that really is, is partnering with these efforts as well. And I just want to say a little bit about our student body. So our motto is the will to do. Um, and our students, our incoming class every year is still over 40% first generation. These are students who are working while they're going to school. And so our students ha definitely have a doing culture. Um, they come with grit and tenacity and being very hardworking. Um, and we want to do everything we can to support their efforts um, and help them balance um, the fact that they're working while they're a student as well and making sure that people are reaching out um, and doing everything they can to keep them connected to campus resources. So uh, just a few early results here. So in Two, so I've been working in the Office of Admissions since 2003 and have been tracking um, our incoming class and, and different demographics. And so when I started, we had 16 Hispanic students in our beginning freshman class. And the fall of 2015, the first fall with uh, Dr. Vargas as our president, we enrolled 33 Hispanic students in our beginning freshman class. Then that increased to 44 and then 48 in fall of 2017. But what I want to point out is that Dulce didn't start working in our office until March of 2017. So she did not have the ability to impact the enrollment of Hispanic students for the fall of 17 class. The first class that we're going to see the results of her efforts will be in fall of 2018 and beyond. And so, you know, if you, you look at this data and we enroll about 1,800 beginning freshmen, we have went from having less than 1% of our incoming class being Hispanic to having almost 3% of our incoming class being Hispanic. So we um, look forward to continue to see the number of Hispanic students that we serve at Southeast increase and see them through to graduation. So next steps, we want to see how we can increase exposure to the wonderful resources that uh, she has collaborated on and created and, you know, how do we increase that exposure? Do we need to put some marketing dollars behind it? Social media or um, digital ads. There's a Hispanic radio station in St. Louis. Uh, our president's involved with the Hispanic Chamber. So just trying to tap into things that are gonna expand, um, increase the exposure, expand those outreach efforts that she began with the communities and the churches. And then we need to make sure that the students that um, that we're bringing on campus are succeeding and just keeping an, an eye on those retention efforts. So talking to those students to see, are there new needs that they have? Are there new resources that we need to develop to support those students? So making sure that we're um, keeping an eye and monitoring that. And then we did want to pull up our Espanol webpage and show you a couple of the videos that were created with University Marketing. I think Dulce is going to get that pulled up. Um, and while they're doing that, you know, I, I just want to reflect on the college fair last night that well, we saw students here from Puerto Rico, and it was 
current students at this university as well as high school students. And I, I can tell you there was a comfort level for them talking to Dulce versus me. And I think that's what's so essential is having her on our team, having her work with this population of students who can see themselves in her. Um, there's, I feel like, a sense of, of trust and um, maybe some understanding that I might not be able to, to build with the student and, and she has that ability to do that. So um, I think it's really wonderful that, that we have that opportunity for her to be a mentor to students. Um, you know, as, as she was mentored in our office, now she's the mentor um, with, with mentees out there. Yes, unfortunately we can really, we're struggling to pull it up, but it is up there at simo.edu dot forward slash Espanol, as you can see up there. And over there I had various tabs that I work on. I had admissions criteria, I had financial aid opportunities, on campus living, and then I also connected with resources that we have available, the counseling services that we have available. And with that again, I wanted to stress again the own page to my own personal, uh, kind of giving back to my organization, the organization of Latinos. Obviously that was a website that took a little more liberty because as a mass comm major, we had to follow the university branding and roles that we had. Most of it was translations that I took from the original content that we had, but uh, one of them, the main page, we featured those videos that I worked on during the summer with the university marketing. We featured those so that students have a quick access to hear about, about our campus, uh, why, what we have to offer. And then especially, I hit it on for DACA and Documented. I have a section for them about the FERPA bill. It's a federal bill that most of those, even I myself, when I was applying, about the legality situations that they might get, get themselves into. And with the FERPA bill, I don't know if many of you are aware with it, uh, we, with that bill, it protects the student from the information to be shared with anyone else. So that's kind of like a privacy thing that we have within our students. So if they decide to say, well, I'm a DACA student or I don't have paperwork, I'm undocumented, that they feel comfortable enough in sharing that and knowing that we're not, we're not allowed to even share. That's, that's a law, that's a federal law. So I wanted them to know that, to feel comfortable in expressing their concerns of what they might have and that, I, that we, as an institution, that we're trying to address those needs and those concerns for these students. But again, I wanted to stress, I'm, I'm sorry we could pull it up on the slide, but if you go to simo.edu forward slash espanol, you can see the website. Muchas gracias. Does anyone have any questions, preguntas, comments, comentarios? Dudas? Quejas? We're open to any questions you guys might have. I'm more than happy to answer them. And our contact information is up here if, if you don't want to ask a question from the group but you want to reach out to us individually. And we do have business cards if you need one of those. No, okay, no, but you have all these DACA students, of course, the, and we have in Connecticut quite a few too. So how are you keeping them going and, and um, you know, uh, encouraged at this time? This time especially difficult, I know many of us are watching the news and trying to see where the government's going. But with that, like I said, with the peer mentoring that we offer, that's why I keep mentioning and stressing about the involvement on campus, the student organization of Latinos. I feel like within our peers, we can empower each other to continue on and forge on and knowing that our education is gonna be our biggest asset, our biggest weapon to defend ourselves out there and making our voices heard and concerns, as you mentioned. But keeping them motivated in that, yes, we're in this together and we're helping each other along the way. Does anyone else have any questions? Preguntas? También acepto en español. So, yo originalmente de México, la ciudad de México. De hecho, nací ahí, viví hasta los nueve años y luego me mudé con mi familia aquí a los Estados Unidos en la botita de Missouri porque había familia. Como saben, la familia es algo muy importante. ¿Tienen preguntas? ¿Any questions? ¿Comentarios? Este es su tiempo de, de discusión si quieren compartir algo con nosotros, obviamente nosotros queremos mejorar, improvisar, mantener mejores métodos para ayudar a, nos, a nuestros estudiantes, de, dependiendo de no, de no importa de dónde sean, yo como estudiante eh, tuve mucha experiencia con los internacionales y es una, una perspectiva dinámica que yo recibí por el campus y la universidad. 
si tienen preguntas o algo, estamos aquí, como mencionó Elena, tenemos nuestra, nuestra información de contacto, si me quieren mandar un correo electrónico, me quieren llamar, o lo que sea, para compartir y mejorar, ayudarnos entre sí. All right. So our track was access, and I just want to make one more statement, and that is, you know, if you look at the data, that the number of students from, from underrepresented populations or maybe lower socioeconomic is not increasing. It's it's remained pretty flat. So for us, we want to reach those students that we know are there and share with them the importance of higher education and the fact that it is achievable. So with that, gracias. Thank you. Thank you.